Seth Meyers, and I cannot thank you enough for having me tonight. Uh, let me just say up top that this evening I'm going to be making a lot of jokes about many of the people in this room, but don't worry. I assure you, no matter how harsh the jokes, they've all been vetted by the man at the top, Chinese President Hu Jintao. <laughs> Truthfully, I'm humbled to be sitting at a table with President Obama, a man I greatly admire. It's such an honor to perform for the leader of the world's most powerful slash poorest country. <laughs> and before I start, these were my birth certificate jokes, so thank you for the timing on that, Mr. President. Now unusable. We were working on these jokes for months. One of my guys said, are you worried we're a little heavy on birth certificate jokes? What if he releases it before the dinner? And I was like, why would he do that? He's not going to wait three years and then release it before the dinner. Who told you I had birth certificate jokes? It was Assange, wasn't it? Is Biden still vice president? Because if not, I'm down to like, thank you and God bless America. Mike Huckabee is considering Iran. Mike Huckabee said the president was raised in Kenya, went to a Muslim school, and he hates America. But despite that, he still seems like a sweet person. So he sounds less like a presidential candidate and more like my aunt. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. Donald Trump often appears on Fox, which is ironic, because a fox often appears on Donald Trump's head. <laughs> if you're at the Washington Post table with Trump and you can't finish your entree, don't worry, the fox will eat it. <laughs> and if I can for a moment talk about the birther issue, when did we get so suspicious about where people were born? A USA Today poll last week said 38% of Americans think the president was definitely born in the U.S. In the same poll, in the very same poll, only 5% more said Donald Trump was definitely born in the U.S. Has it reached the point where Americans only think something was ha someone was born here if they saw it? I know I was born here, and I know my younger brother was born here. But when it comes to my older brother, I can only take him at his word. Gary Busey said recently that Donald Trump would make a great president. Of course, he said the same thing about an old rusty birdcage he found. <laughs> Donald Trump owns the Miss USA pageant, which is great for Republicans because it will streamline their search for a vice president. <laughs> Donald Trump said recently he has a great relationship with the blacks, Though unless the blacks are a family of white people, I bet he's mistaken. <laughs> I like that Trump is filthy rich, but nobody told his accent. His whole life is models and gold leaf and marble columns, but he still sounds like a know-it-all down at the OTB. Mr. Trump may not be a good choice for president, but he would definitely make a great press secretary. How much fun would that be? Kim Jong-il is a loser. His latest rally was a flop. I feel bad for Ahmadinejad. He, he never man wears a windbreaker. He has no class. I, on the other hand, sell my own line of ties. You can find them at Macy's in the flammable section. So it's not a strong field. And who knows if they can beat you in 2012. But I tell you who could definitely beat you, Mr. President, 2008 Barack Obama. You would have loved him. So charismatic, so charming. Was he a little too idealistic? Maybe. But you would have loved him. I still think we all remember that inauguration day, the first lady was there. And may I say, for as beautiful as you look that day, you look even more beautiful tonight. Now you, on the other hand, Mr. President, have aged a little. What happened to you? When you were sworn in, you looked like the guy from the Old Spice commercials. 
Now you look like Louis Gossett Sr. <laughs> I've never said this to anyone before, but maybe you should start smoking again. <laughs> Is this the change you were talking about? <laughs> Mr. President, look at your hair. If your hair gets any whiter, the Tea Party is going to endorse it. Uh, I'm going to get an angry voicemail from Jenny Thomas in 19 years. But I believe the President would agree with me that the mood has changed a bit since the beginning of his term. At the beginning of his term, Mr. President, housewives were trying to sneak in the house, into the White House. Not anymore. Now everyone's leaving. Axelrod, Gibbs, Rahm Emanuel. By this time next year, it'll just be you and Joe Biden trying to find toner for the copy machine. <laughs> and now your re-election campaign has begun. I bet it's hard getting back in campaign mode again. You know who's really dreading it? Will I am. He's writing down words that rhyme with debt ceiling. The Heritage Foundation projected that joke would get a standing ovation. <laughs> Probably shouldn't trust those guys. But Mr. President, I truly still have confidence in you. For one, you still have the First Lady. And of course, you still have Joe Biden. What can I say about Joe Biden that hasn't already been said incorrectly by Joe Biden? <laughs> I imagine having Joe Biden as Vice President is kind of like taking your blue-collar dad to a fancy restaurant. He's more comfortable at the Olive Garden. He talks a little too loud. He mispronounces the sauces. And you're always tempted to lean over to the waiter and say, I'm sorry about him. He's from Scranton. <laughs> the president and Joe Biden were not invited to the royal wedding. And when Biden found out, he immediately said to the president, you, me, wedding crashers too. I'll book us two Amtrak tickets to London. The Vice President loves train. He loves the trains, and I assume it must have been hard for the President to tell Biden the new budget cut $1.5 billion from high-speed rail. Joe, come on in. Take off your engineer's cap. <laughs> I have some bad news about the choo-choos. <laughs> As he broke the news, one of the straps on Joe's overall sadly drooped off his shoulder. On the subject of budgets, I would be remiss not to mention Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan introduced a budget plan that would overhaul Medicare and make deep cuts to other social and health care programs. Because he believes the American people have said loud and clear, stop using my tax dollars to take care of me. <laughs> I noticed that his approach to the budget led many to praise Paul Ryan as a serious adult. And I have to say, nothing is more depressing about politics than the fact that adult is now a compliment. Adult is only a compliment to a child. I'm so proud of you. You acted like an adult tonight. I'm glad I brought you to my boss's house for dinner. You even cut your own meat like a big boy. Also, Congress, there are a lot of things you want us to be impressed by that we are not impressed by. We are not impressed that you sat next to each other at the State of the Union. You know what the rest of Americans call an evening spent politely sitting next to a person with wildly different political views? Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're not impressed when you complain about how bills are too long to read. The health care bill is almost 2,000 pages good. A bill to that, to that ensures every person in America should be longer than the girl with the dragon tattoo. Also, while we're at it, I don't think you read bills anyways. I think you guys vote on bills in the same way the rest of us agree to updated terms and conditions on iTunes. <laughs> well, I should wrap it up. I'm getting the red light. Not the red light that signals I'm out of time, but the red light that signals the C-SPAN Handicam is running low on batteries. <laughs> in all seriousness, I want to thank all of the journalists here tonight. I couldn't do my job if you didn't do yours. And it's fitting that this event happened on the same weekend as the royal wedding, because as I was watching the festivities, I couldn't help thinking how wonderful it is to live in a country where people don't wear hats like that. <laughs> Tonight has truly been an incredible honor for me. 
America is the greatest country on earth and, at least when my speech started, was still a nation rated AAA by Standard & Poor's. <laughs> Thank you and good night.